Hi friends, welcome to the main answer writing practice. Today we will discuss the answer for question number 30. Question number 30 is from General Studies paper 3. It is on disaster management. In UPSC from last few years, they are asking questions specifically on disaster management guidelines released by NDMA particularly in 2008. So this question is regarding the floods. As you can see the question, it is saying that Actually, it has given a statement. It has given a statement from the NDMA guidelines, the mission statement. Actually, what NDMA does is for every disaster, may it be drought, floods, earthquake, landslide, whatever, it will release certain guidelines to manage the disaster. And in those guidelines, it will give a mission statement. So the first statement is actually the mission statement of NDMA to manage the floods. And then the question is asked. The question is mention the flood prevention, preparedness and mitigation measures. See here carefully in the NDMA guidelines the prevention, preparedness and mitigation are not given separately. They have combined all the three. They means if you read the NDMA guidelines it will be mentioned as prevention, preparedness and mitigation measures and they will give common measures for them. So you do not try to separate them. You don't try to write prevention measures separately, preparedness separately, mitigation separately. Don't try to do that. It is difficult because NDMA did not give it like that. Then this is what you have to write. So how do you start this kind of questions? My suggestion is for this kind of questions, uh, the introduction I would suggest is you just write one line about what is NDMA and write about the floods. If it is regarding the drought, you write two lines about the drought in India. And then you come to the actual question. No need to explain the mission statement again. No need to explain it. So, in the introduction, you can just say that National Disaster Management Authority is an apex body in India to formulate the policy and guidelines to, fo to formulate the policy and guidelines for management of any disaster. When it comes to the flood, you briefly describe the effect of floods on India. I mean, the, the gravity of the situation, the gravity of the floods in India. You can simply draw India map if you want quickly. And you can say, you can show the highly flood, flood prone areas. You can show like this, like this. In Brahmaputra River, and then this one, the Koshi River, the Damodar, this river. And you know, the Mahanadi, Udavari, Krishna, Kaveri. Some areas are another. You can show like this. So you can say this is flood prone zones of India. You can draw a map. Or you can say area wise 12% of India, which is almost equal to 40 million hectares of India, uh, is categorized as a flood prone zone. Just to mention that one line, one line about NDMA. And if you want to write historical aspect, you can simply say that traditionally in India, the people of India traditionally they follow certain methods to mitigate the floods. However, the population of India has increased by leaps and bounds in the last 70 years and along the flood prone zones, the infrastructure has increased, the settlements have increased, hence the disaster has also increased. Hence, NDMA has to formulate a policy to regulate, to manage the flood and to reduce the disaster. So you can write like that if you want. Otherwise, this is true enough in introduction. Now, as I told you earlier, you don't try to explain what is preparedness, what is mitigation, what is prevention. Don't try to explain all those things because there is no enough space and time. You have got two end of pages and already there are a lot of points you have to write regarding the, prepa the preparedness mitigation measures. A lot of measures have to be written. But if you do not know any measures, then you can write this kind of nonsense things. What is prevention? What is mitigation? This kind of things you can write if you do not know much of the measures. So, for any disaster management question, I would suggest you to draw a disaster management cycle. Generally, the people who write the exam for the first time, they will draw the cycle. But those who write the mains for third time or fourth time, generally they will shy away. They want to write the answer differently. Don't try to do that. Just draw the disaster management cycle. No need to explain the cycle. Just draw it. Just draw it. If you know these things, you can write these things also. Otherwise, just you know, write uh, preparedness. This is disaster actually. This is disaster. Off disaster response and recovery. 
before disaster be prepared and try to mitigate the disaster if it occurs so draw the cycle quickly don't try to explain now come to the actual question asked you can say that the preparedness prevention and mitigation measures given by ndma guidelines are broadly classified into structural and non structural measures structural measures means physically you try to avoid the flood water to come to the people you avoid that non structural means you avoid the people going to the flood water so there is a difference between structural and non structural measures now come to the structural measures it's better if you write as many points as possible no need to explain much just mention different points evaluate you can understand what do you mean by them instead of explaining three points elaborately you write more points briefly for example among structural measures the uh, one thing is construction of embankments flood walls levees if this is a river you construct the embankment here along this for example in the villages where more space is available you can build earthen earthen embankments made with the earth where is in towns and cities where the space is less you can use masonry or concrete walls concrete walls like levees to avoid the flood water from spilling onto the flood banks another method is during the floods the excess water that comes into the rivers can be stored by construction of dams reservoirs or any other water storage units in fact the water here can be used for power generation can be used for you know, irrigation facilities fishing or drinking water or industrial purpose also another measure is channel improvement the main river channel or the sub channels of the river can be improved in fact you can construct new channels also to divert the excess water during the floods however channel improvement is a expensive expensive measure so it can be used sparingly particularly when the damage is high another measure is desiltation and dredging of the river in the river what happens is particularly in few places for example the place where the water comes from the hills to the plains lot of silt is accumulated or the place where a river goes into another river there as there is abrupt decrease in the velocity you know lot of silt is accumulated or near the convex bends in the bends also silt is accumulated in this kind of places you have to do dredging or remove the silt so that the water capacity of the river will increase another important structural measure is drainage improvement these days particularly in cities what is happening is the natural drainage of the river has been blocked by encroachment by settlements by construction in the name of development so this has to be avoided or removed removed avoided or removed or you improve the drainage by construction of more drainage channels another thing is similar to drainage improvement diversion of flood water you try to identify where most of the flood water will accumulate particularly in cities try to divert it by construction of artificial lakes artificial ponds or try to divert the water from one place of river again join it to another place of river where the flood water is lesser another thing is catchment area can be treated actually catchment area means this is a river during the rainfall the water collected in the catchment area will come to the river so if you can reduce the water coming from catchment area to river automatically the flood effect will be reduced but how can you reduce the water coming from catchment area one is by afforestation by afforestation you can make the water stay there absorbed by the ground other thing is check dams by construction of check dams by construction of check dams in the catchment area the water flow can be reduced because the water will sink into the ground rather than going into the river or even construction of artificial basins basins or detention basins in the you know the catchment area this is called overall all these measures are called as catchment area treatments anti erosion works means particularly in the meandering rivers at the place of meander the force of water is more because of that the erosion will occur here and it will the, the, river, the river water will enter into the nearby villages or cities so this resistance has to be reduced by diverting the water or some you know geotechnical works can be done what are those geotechnical works no need to discuss them just you can write some geotechnical works can be done in those areas to reduce the increase of the meandering of the river they are called as anti erosional works see as the question is asking about flood flood 
they did not tell about river flood or sea flood. Sea flood means during the storm surges, even in the coastal areas, for example, along the coastal areas of India, during cyclone or storm surges, the coastal flooding can happen. Along with the river flooding, write at least one or two points on the coastal flooding. So to reduce the coastal flooding, you have to construct sea wall. Coastal protection walls called groins can be constructed. This is one of the structural measures. Then one more thing is, most along the rivers, along the lakes, the roadways, railway embankments are constructed. If their design is poor, if the embankment design is poor, the effect of flood will be more along those railway or uh, the, the road line. Hence, uh, it has to be designed properly. Also remember, you should write one line that all these structural measures, the most important thing is regular inspection and you know, uh, regular maintenance. If you do not do this inspection and maintenance, structural measures will not help in the long term. Now let us come to the non-structural measures. Non-structural measures means you, you somehow avoid the people from getting in contact with the flood water. For example, flood plain zoning. Flood plains, you identify, for example, in India, you identify the flood plains. Identify the flood plains. In those plains, whichever areas you think are more prone to floods, you avoid construction of any heavy infrastructure or settlements there. If needed, you can develop agriculture there, particularly agriculturally those crops which require excess of water. That is called flood plain zoning. Just like earthquake planning, planning flood plains shall be planned during the construction. Flood proofing. Flood proofing means, for example, there will be a flood level. When flood occurs, there will be a general level. In the last 100 years, you can measure, find a flood level. You construct the most important structures above the flood level. For example, the drinking water pipelines or the basic electric cables should be constructed above the flood level. Even during the flood times, uh, there should be some common structures in the village where people can come. They should be constructed at a higher level, at a, at a higher elevation, at a higher elevation, at a higher altitude, so that during the flood, the water does not submerge those structures, so that all the people in the village can come and stay there. For example, if you construct a three-story building in the below store for cattle, the store for you know storage of the food grains, whatever, above is for people, something like that. It's called flood proofing. And flood forecasting and flood warning. In India, the flood has to be forecast at least two to three days in advance. Based on the amount of rainfall, you should forecast the flood and warn the people who are at the risk of flooding. In that way, you can avoid the people to get in contact with the flood water. Also, integrated water resource management is a very broad topic. Just you can just mention in just mention IED. IW, you know, RM, Integrated Water Source Management, which will look into, you know, not only flood water, but also the management of water as a whole in the city or in the village, in the India as a whole, for agriculture, for irrigation, for power development, whatever. This, if you can do integrated water resource management properly, automatically the effect of the flood on the people of India will be reduced. Also, in the preparedness, you can write about the medical preparedness, how you should train in the flood prone areas, you have to train the people around uh, in the in in the medical treatment so that they can act as the first responders you know medical stores in those areas should be particularly equipped in in you know helping the patients particularly during the flood flood times and how to evacuate the patients so this is called medical preparedness so in this way you can mention the preparedness mitigation and prevention strategy measures the, this kind of questions how to conclude you can conclude my suggestion is in the conclusion, just write four to five lines, but try to write all the terms of disaster management that you know. For example, you say that along with the above measures, we require for proper institutional framework to, to implement these measures and proper financial arrangement is required to fund uh, immediately for flood management and the above measures should be regulated and enforced sincerely. For example, the flood prone zoning, this kind of thing shall be enforced and regulated sincerely and capacity development of the people as well as the uh, personnel, the department personnel, NDMA personnel. And the flood response along with the preparedness mitigation, response and recovery shall be uh, emphasized to reduce the damage of disaster. Okay. So in that way you can end. And friends, this is the question for tomorrow as we are going in a cycle, GS1, 2, 3, now GS4. The, the, this time I have given a question from international relations particularly on the international funding, what are the ethical issues involved in the international funding? This is the question. 
So write the answer in 150 words in 7 to 8 minutes. See you friends. Take care.